our Catholic faith will be partly unintelligible if we fail to acknowledge the special role of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the development of faith from the simple gospel narrative to the elaborate Mariology of contemporary times. Non-Catholics may accuse us, Catholics, of giving too much importance to Mary because of our numerous Marian devotional practices as well as the proliferation of Marian-inspired spirituality. But admit it or not, Mary plays a significant role in our Catholic spirituality. My dear brothers and sisters, the Gospel writers, especially St. Luke, are unanimous in depicting the special role of Mary in salvation history. St. Paul, in his different letters to different Christian communities, said very little about Mary, but St. Paul has a classic statement in his letter to the Galatians when St. Paul said, When the appointed time had come, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born a subject of the law, to redeem the subjects of the law and to enable us to become children of God. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is also the Son of Mary, generated eternally by the Father. Jesus entered human history and was born as the child of Mary that we might partake of the divinity of Jesus. The union of divinity and humanity took place in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. When the then Pope Pius IX declared the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception in his encyclical entitled In Ephabilis Deus, on December 8, 1854, the Holy Father said, and I quote, Mary is not only immaculate, but entirely immaculate. She is not only innocent, but entirely innocent. She is not only spotless, but the most spotless. They called Mary holy and completely removed from every stain of sin, all pure and all, but the very archetype of purity and innocence who alone and in her entirety has become the dwelling place of all the graces of the Holy Spirit. God alone exempted. Mary is superior to all. My dear brothers and sisters, almost as soon as Pope Pius IX articulated the dogma of Mary's Immaculate Conception, the Vatican was overwhelmed with petitions from all over the world to also define Mary's assumption into heaven. Request from around the world was unanimous. It was profuse in favor of a definition of Mary's assumption. That is why on November 1, 1950, Pope Pius XII, in an apostolic constitution entitled Munificentissimus Deus made the solemn definition of Mary's assumption and said, and I quote, By the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and by our own authority, we pronounce, declare, and define as divinely inspired dogma that the Immaculate Mother of God, Mary Ever Virgin, after her life on earth, was assumed body and soul to the glory of heaven. Her body is holy and excelling in splendor. My dear friends, this solemn declaration of Catholic belief in Mary's assumption to heaven is what we celebrate today. Mary's assumption is one of the four Catholic Marian dogmas. What are the four Catholic Marian dogmas? Number one, the divine motherhood of Mary. Number two, 
the perpetual virginity of Mary. Number three, the immaculate conception of Mary. And number four, the assumption of Mary. A number of times, even Catholic skeptics have been asking for the biblical foundation of this purely Catholic teaching. The Bible does not give us an account of Mary's assumption into heaven, but Revelation chapter 12 in the first reading that we read today it speaks of a woman who is caught up in the battle between good and evil. And many see this woman as God's promise. The first reading from the book of Revelation says, A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. That is what you read in the first reading. Since Mary best embodies the people of both the Old and the New Testaments, her assumption can be seen as an exemplification of the woman's victory and the Catholic faith uses other biblical texts in defending the dogma of Mary's assumption. Like in the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, Just as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will come to life again, but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, and then at His coming all those who belong to Him. And in the Gospel of St. John, do not let your hearts be troubled. There are many rooms in my Father's house. I am going to prepare a place for you, and then I shall come back. I will take you with me, so that where I am, you also may be. My dear brothers and sisters, there is a controversial question. A controversial question is what I would like to throw to all of us today. Listen. Did Mary die or did she not die before her heavenly assumption? Did she die or did she not die? Namatay ba siya o hindi siya namatay? Listen. There are two schools of thought. Number one. One group claims that Mary did not die because death is a consequence of sin. Mary could not be under the dominion of death, which would have been the case had her earthly body decayed. But there is no proof that her earthly body decayed. Besides, Mary did not share in man's original sin because her womb was to be the dwelling place of the Son of God. In other words, Mary was taken up to heaven without corruption. But there is another school of thought. Another group argues that if, Mary di if Jesus died, Mary should also die. Jesus died not because of his participation in original sin. Jesus died to save us. But the argument of this group is that Mary also died because she is a human being like all of us. And her assumption took place after her death. Now, which of these two theological opinions is correct? The dogma simply says, that Mary was taken up to heaven, body and soul, when the course of her earthly life was finished. My dear friends, we do not know the answer. We have no solid historical evidence to prove one over the other. But when Pope St. Pius XII defined the dogma of the Assumption, he avoided the question altogether whether Mary died or did not die. Instead of answering the question directly, Pope Pius XII chose a sort of middle position. And he said that the Immaculate Mother of God, the ever-Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her life on earth, was assumed body and soul into heaven. 
the conclusion of her earthly life may have ended with her death or with her falling asleep. We simply do not know. What is certain though is that her earthly life came to an end. Either way, God did not allow Mary to see the corruption of the tomb, which is to say, God did not allow the body of Mary to decay as our bodies will one day decay. The bottom line, this is already almost 7 o'clock, the bottom line is that the assumption of Mary is a fitting climax of her holy life. The Almighty has done great things for me. God has exalted the lowly. Mary completed His earthly life perfectly. Her assumption to heaven is her most beautiful divine reward. My dear brothers and sisters, the dogma of Mary's assumption teaches that Mary is the Queen of Heaven. Regina Celi, ang reina ng langit in Cebuano, reina sa langit. It teaches that there exists a future life with God. Thus, our hope for a heavenly future is assured. There is heaven to look forward to. Heaven is our true home. And the assumption of Mary to heaven reminds us that abot kamay na natin ang langit. Abot kamay na natin ang langit. May the Blessed Mother, the Queen of Heaven, bring our prayers and petitions with her when she is assumed to heaven. Amen.